Hello. Hi, everyone. Kayla Lords. John Brownstone. Of Loving BDSM, where we help kinksters like you have happy, healthy power exchange relationships. That's the rumor. Uh, <laughs> we are, I don't know how to classify this. Are we giving tips? Or is it a story time? We're just talking. It's a combo, kind of, sort of. It's, just how we do things. It's how we do things. We're yeah. having a conversation um, to share how we decide as an established power exchange couple mm -hmm. with very established kinks how we decide to try new things, new yeah. kinks or a new direction in our relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it'll be very complex. I don't think there's like a bunch of mystery to it, but I think that it's very easy to get established with the things you know you like mm -hmm. and to get established in how you move through your role in your power exchange and not really think about, but how do we do new things? How are we gonna incorporate something yeah. new and exciting or new and different or, oh, we can't or don't want to do this thing anymore, but we still want to have certain, you know, kinky fun together. So we're just sharing our experiences. Mm. Um, your method will probably look different, mm. um, but we thought it would be interesting to talk about. Yeah. Can, so. can I digress just a wee bit? I'm glad it's you and not me for once. And and I, I kind of like to go back how we did it in the beginning mm, a little bit. Yes. Um, because I was more experienced mm -hmm. than you. Mm -hmm. And and I think the, a lot of people find themselves in that position, whether it's the, the dom that's more experienced and, and the sub is less experienced or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And and I think maybe this is something that could, could help Sure, both sides of that real quick. Um, you know, when, when we met, I, I had already had a number of years in, in the lifestyle. You knew some things, but there, there had were- a basic you, idea, you, you sure. had a basic understanding of things. And, and when we went through the, our original checklist together, there were a lot of things you were like, oh, I don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. And to me, those were kind of like staples, so to speak. Can you, I can think of one thing, but can you think of any examples? Um, um, like rope. Sure. For, I, well, uh, I understood and, rope bondage was a thing. Yeah. I didn't have any understand, deep nuanced understanding. Mm -hmm. And my impression of that was based on a, not even a surface level. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like more of a, oh, I think I read that in some erotica once and think mm -hmm. I know what that means. Yeah. What I did with Kayla was, uh, you know, when when there was something that I wanted to bring to the table at that time, um, I would tell her what that was. Um, like I think at one point, one of them was Wartenberg wheel. That's the one I was thinking of. Okay. That was the one I was thinking of. Okay. So I was like, what is that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what I had her do was I made it a task for her. Mm -hmm. I was like, I already knew a, a fair amount about them, had played with them. And, and I told her, I said, all right, I want you to go out and I want you to find information on this. Mm -hmm. And I want you to take notes. And you have one week to do this. Yeah, there was a deadline. There was, there was a deadline. This was not like this. This was a task that was assigned her. And I, I want you to go out, gather information on this, make notes. At in, in a week's time, I want you to bring this information to me, and we are going to sit down and and discuss the information that you brought me. And we were long distance at the time, mm -hmm. so I am really good at writing book reports. <laughs> so yes. I did it like a report, which I think it was two paragraphs. Mm -hmm. um, did it in a Google Doc, shared it with you, yeah, and then we over the phone. We talked about it and you, right. I remember you asking questions. So, okay, what did you learn? And I was like, let me read this paragraph. <laughs> uh, what did you think about what you yeah. learned? And so then I was able to give my impressions. And then I, I remember in the discussion, it was like, okay, so would you like to try this? And I was like, mm. Wartenberg wheels specifically, if you're not familiar with them, they're basically pinwheels. They are medical devices that have been perverted. Mm -hmm. um, they have little sharp spokes on them and they don't have to hurt but they are used in a lot of pain play. Sensation it's play. It's a yeah. sensation mm -hmm. play because they're prickly and they're sharp. And yeah. I am not a fan of sharp prickly pain. <laughs> and I knew that about myself already. So I was like, eh, <laughs> I'll try anything once. And I won't try anything once. But that was my response. I guess I'll mm -hmm. try it. And I've since learned that uh, it cannot be the main star. 
No, no. But it, it is allowed it, to exist in the sphere. But being mixed in, yeah. in, in among other things, it, it, it's acceptable. But the very beginning of that, it had to be all theoretical, especially we were long distance. Right. I didn't have any, I wasn't going to go buy my own Wartenberg wheel. I did not care enough <laughs> for that. Um, and we weren't together to play. So right. we talked about it. I had theories on what it might be like. Um, cause you can only read so much. You can only watch so many videos. You know, the real experience comes from it going through it and, and trying it. And so then when we got together and you were like, here's the word word wheel. I was like, Oh, that's what it looks like. But I had at least a passing familiarity with it at that point. And mm-hmm. then we could try it and then we could talk about it even more. And that's when I was like, yeah. I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. That's very prickly. And I'm not a fan <laughs> of prickly. Uh, but you like to tease and torment me with that. Yes, I do. Um, yes, I do. And that, yeah, that for a long time was how we did things. Right. You know, I always I always thought part of it was we were long distance, so it needed to be an easy way for me to learn Correct. things. And two, I always got the impression you were playing to my strengths. I like to read and research and learn. And then yes. I am comfortable with taking what I've learned and turning it into something written to show what I have learned. To right. And I like to write to explain myself. I'm much more comfortable now speaking to explain myself. But at the time, <laughs> writing was easier. Yeah. Um, I think that any that kind of method can work in any way that works for a person. So maybe writing's not your thing, but saying it out loud. You can record a voice memo. Mm-hmm. Um, watching videos and then explaining it back. Like, however, but yeah, play to those strengths of how you research best and how you consume information and take it in and can understand it. Um, right. as part of that. But yeah, that was that worked really well for us while we were long distance. It, it did. And and now, as we have become more established as a couple mm-hmm. and kinksters, that has kind of um, shifted. I would it, say it's done a 180. It, it, it's done a 180. Um, you, at, at, at that time, I was very, very busy and involved in my job, my career at that time. And you had a little more time on your hands to be able to do that Mm -hmm. kind of research. And I was at a level, you were trying to share things you already knew with me. Mm -hmm. And this was the easiest way for me to learn on my own and to make up my own mind about what I thought about that. Right, Mm -hmm. right. And, And now it has shifted in as much as you are deeply busy with, with your work now, mm-hmm, that is true. Um, which leaves you very little free time, mm-hmm. so to speak. So now when there is something new that we would like to try and incorporate, it, it is me that does the research. Mm-hmm. And then I bring that to you. And I, again, I think we're playing to your strengths there. So now we're at a stage because of the length of our relationship, we are trying brand new things to each other, things that both mm-hmm. of us don't really know about. Wax play is a good example. Right. Um, and so the very first thing is we talk about it. What do you think about this? Mm-hmm. Because we've got to check to see, is this a hard limit we didn't know until we actually had right. to think about it? Is, is this even something we want to deep dive into, so to speak? And deep dive into together. So the nature of our relationship, we follow ethical non-monogamy. JB has other partners. Um, so he could go experience explore maybe not during a pandemic but he can go explore other things with other people but he's going to check with me first hey is this something that you're interested in right if it was a hard limit he could still go off and learn about it if he wanted to but he's checking to see is this something we can do so in the terms of wax play i was like i've always been intrigued by wax play sure sure let's try it but like you said i don't have a lot of time to sit and go research and watch a lot of things Mm -hmm. and read a lot of things and you are actually very good at researching things I, I am. I, I, I have found um, over time, I love deep diving mm-hmm. in, into the research aspect of things. Um, I, I will Google things and, and find uh, blog posts, information pieces. Um, I will look for videos. Um, I will look for workshops. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've attended workshops on various things to learn more about them. Uh, one that comes to mind uh, recently is Electroplay. I did did a, uh, a Zoom uh, workshop on Electroplay, mm-hmm. which which was fascinating. If there is uh, a decent thing that's happened during the pandemic, and there's very few, 
the amount of education, kink education, going online. Yes. More easily accessible. Yep. Ooh, yep. You've gone to a lot of workshops mm-hmm. in the past year. Yeah. So what the way that works for me, and it works best because we've been in our relationship long enough, mm-hmm. is you go off, you learn the thing. Right. You And you deep dive in a way I would not necessarily deep dive. You come back to me and go, okay, here's what I've learned. And that gives me an opportunity to ask questions, which mm-hmm. sometimes will have you go, oh, wait, let me go find out. I hadn't thought right. about that. So my perspective is still in there, um, mm-hmm. giving you something to think about. It also helps that I trust you because I know you. I know that you're very thorough when you learn something. Right. You have a great way of explaining things. So if I have questions, I know you'll go find out. But most of the time you're like, oh, well, that can be handled by, like we were talking about candle wax, temperature. I was like, wait, aren't there certain candles? And you're like, yes, there are certain types of candles. And you have to find the one that you know burns hot, burns less right. hot, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so we have that opportunity. It's the next layer of communication. You're sharing the information with me. Right. I'm getting the opportunity to ask questions, which sometimes prompts more research. Um, not always. And then, then I have, I'm better informed and can go, yeah, I'm, yeah, let's move forward. That sounds mm-hmm. fine. Now, once we've done that part, now the only way you can really know, is this a thing I really want to do, is to have some physical way to try it. Right. And I, I think right now the, the best example with, would be the candle wax. Mm-hmm. Um, we had some wax play candles, mm-hmm. and we were sitting around the kitchen table. Mm-hmm. And, you know, before doing a full scene... Yes, we with, do not do... The, um, do scenes you know, first. That's not where let, we start. <laughs> um, kind of dipped our toes into mm-hmm. the fact that, okay, we're here. Let's get these things out. Light a candle. I dripped it on my arm mm-hmm. because I wanted to see what the sensation was like on me And you've first. done that with every toy you've ever played with. You do it with paddles, floggers, crops. Yeah. Anything that's going to touch me touches mm-hmm. you first. Right. I, I, I want to know what this is going to do, how that that is going to translate to somebody else that... Mm-hmm. You know, so, and, and I think that's an important thing to know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I dripped some of the wax on my arm because I wanted an understanding of how the, the height mm-hmm. translates to it and, and what it feels like. Did that, then it went to doing it on her arm. At the kitchen table. Yeah. Nobody was naked still mm-hmm. at this point. We're not seating no. anywhere. And, you know... That kind of gave gave us some gauge to right, what you thought. Right, because while that was happening, we're having a constant back and forth. It's not Dom sub headspace. It is, wow, that was really hot. I didn't expect that. What happens if you, in this case, the wax play, hold the candle higher? Mm-hmm. What if we do a different part of my arm? Is it, you know, is the inner arm more sensitive? What about a, right. the outer forearm? Um, and we're talking as equals back and forth. <laughs> This is what this feels like. Ooh, I don't like this. Oh, I did like that. Oh, I think that could be bearable. And I'm giving information about what I'm experiencing. Right. Um, not in some sexy, kinky way, but just factually. This is what right. this feels like. This this was an, a, a um, fact-seeking... Yes. And we've done that with rope. We've mm-hmm. done that with new paddles and impact play toys. Uh, we've done that with electroplay. Right. The very first time I feel it... It is not meant for me to feel my most subby self. Mm -hmm. I am sharing information and assessing, do I even like this? Because sometimes we've tried some things. I was like, "Mm, I don't really like that. Like the Wartenberg wheel. Yeah. Um, And that conversation led to, I think we decided to try either the first time uh, a higher up position or, yeah. and then that still wasn't quite right. I was still giving feedback. It, you, uh, you were still kind of giving feedback. You, you liked it, but it was still not quite right for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And from that, I kind of went back into research mode, mm-hmm. started looking at all the different various combinations of candle wax. Yes. Okay. That, that can be used for wax play. And discovered that there is one type that does not burn as hot as some others. And then there's combinations of the two. And, and eventually, I did find 
a, a, a candle mm -hmm. that you enjoy, that yes. we, we continue to play with. You like it. And, and what's funny about that is by the time we got to that, we had finally tried, when I say scene, uh, do not think dim lighting, loud music, and fetish gear. Like for us, scene was, yeah, I had taken my clothes off. We decided to spend some serious time playing with candle wax. Mm -hmm. um, we would call that a scene, even though there's not a lot of like extra accessories. To yeah. Um, and we had picked, we had gone with one that still wasn't completely comfortable to me, but I wanted to try a full on, not just my arm, not just like five mm -hmm. minutes on my back. Like, let's do a whole thing. Go across my whole back with right. this candle wax. Maybe there's some things I still don't know. I could tolerate it, but I wasn't in love with it yet. And we had played with that. And from that, I afterwards, after aftercare, and I was giving feedback then, because we tend to do like a debriefing at yeah. some point after a scene, especially with a newer kink. Yeah. I was like, I want to enjoy this, but this is still a little too hard for me. And I was starting to become resigned to, well, maybe candle wax is not gonna be a thing I can really do. And you were like, mm, I think we, there's other things we can try. Right. And finally, when we found the, in this case for the wax play, the candles that were perfect. Mm -hmm. We, I think we played for like 45 minutes. I yeah. was covered in wax that mm -hmm. time. And now because we found the tools we like, because I've given the feedback, um, both with a really hot candle that I didn't like and these new candles, the next time it'll just be a scene. Right. It, I will give feedback if I need to, if we discover, hey, wait, if you hit that part of my skin, I don't like that or whatever. I still do that in any scene, um, but this will be more like, okay, maybe we'll turn some music on. There'll definitely be some fun kinky play going on. You know, mm -hmm. we'll incorporate other established kinks now. In with it. In with it. Yes. It doesn't have to just be a standalone thing. Right. Um, that doesn't mean that we wouldn't play with wax play just on its own in a scene, but now we have a comfort level with it. Now we've gone through those stages of experimenting mm -hmm. and feedback mm -hmm. and finding what we like about it. Right. Now we are more comfortable combining it with other things we do as yeah. well. It has a more fluid feel to it. It's not, there's still more to learn because there's always more to learn, sure. but we're not in that newbie active learning mm -hmm. phase anymore. So, it is, if I'm going to try and sum up the steps, there's conversation with a partner, assuming you want to learn a new kink right. with a partner. Um, there's researching in the way that you best learn. You know, uh, I tend to learn best when I read books or watch videos. Other people want to listen to a podcast or they want to go to a workshop and get hands on. Um, but, and if you are in a relationship, I would say the person with the strongest research skills and or the strongest interest in the thing, let them be the person. Mm -hmm. It is does not matter what the role is, okay? A dom clearly can do the research. A sub can do the research. Uh, your submissive can be assigned it as a task if it puts them in the headspace and helps them in some way, great. But it doesn't really matter. Um, go with whoever's strongest in it. And then please do not, the moment you have a little bit of information, go scene with it, experiment, practice, Make sure both of you know what these sensations feel like. Um, and then just slowly ease your way into it. it mm -hmm. It's both that complicated and that simple. It means having patience. It means right. going slower than yeah. you probably want. I mean, it's, it's, it's like we've talked about in the past as far as um, in instituting rules and protocols. Mm -hmm. You know, one step at a time, mm -hmm. slow and steady. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with this. You know, you... You, you don't just jump into doing a, a, a full head to toe wax scene, you know, first, first time day. out. Mm -hmm. you, you, you dip your toes one step mm -hmm. at a time and, and you build. And that is all part of the fun. It is part of the fun and it strengthens your communication skills and mm -hmm. it keeps everybody safer because what you need to do as you're learning a new kink is assess the risk. Yeah. You know some of the risks by the research, by talking to other people, by listening to other people, um, but you don't really understand them for yourself until you start experiencing what this thing feels like. What are the mechanisms that you have to follow? What are the tools you need to use? Um, wax play, hello, fire. Fire mm -hmm. is a huge safety risk. Hot, molten, melted wax. Right. Huge safety risk. I mean, there is sure. a chance I mean, we could burn you, one you of can, each you can, other. Somebody could get get a burn. Right. So you want to take these things slow uh, mm -hmm. in order to keep everybody safe. But part of the, especially if you're doing this within a, a relationship, 
you are building on your communication and your trust with one another because yeah. you're learning together. Um, it does tend to mean you probably need to have a sense of humor about certain things um, because sure. it's not going to be picture perfect the first few times you try it. Mm -mm. Hell, you might play with a king for years and have a moment it's not perfect and right. you can get mad or you can try and laugh it off. <laughs> um, but And you want to lean on each other. So yeah. there should not be a moment where the dominant partner's like, we're going to do this this way and you're just going to take it because you're the submissive. The submissive needs to be giving clear feedback, even if it means saying, I don't like how this feels. That didn't feel good. That impact landed incorrectly. Please don't do that on this part of my body. That is how everybody has a better experience ultimately. And everybody is safe within right. the power exchange, not just within the kink. So it's simple, but it's not always easy. Uh, typical, uh, it does require patience, um, and, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. And you can explore as many kinks as you as an individual or you and your relationship want to um, safely. Right. It, you know, to put it in a nutshell with it, you know, when you're, you're, you're looking at trying a new kink, safe, sane, and consensual. And if you don't like that one, risk aware, consensual kink. Right. Either way, mm -hmm. know the risks, educate yourself on the thing itself, practice yeah. okay none of us i hope uh turned a certain age got a driver's license and got behind the wheel of a car for the first time the day we got our license right we practiced mm -hmm. we had to learn how to do it we had to gain the muscle memory we had to gain the knowledge we had to screw yeah. it up <laughs> to learn <laughs> from our mistakes yes. the same is true in your new kinks but you're older and wiser now i hope <laughs> especially uh if any of you got your license when you were a teenager <laughs> i hope you're smarter and wiser now um and so it it's not a failing to go slow it's not a failing to lean into the expertise of the other partner uh, i'm right. talking to you doms lean on your sub if they know more than you do mm -hmm. let their expertise guide this um if they have it um but yeah that's how we do it right uh, i would love to know how you do it if you have a different mm. method or some tips or things that you have learned that work for you that we didn't touch on feel free to comment down in below um i don't know how words work <laughs> how does this youtube <laughs> thing work again uh, <laughs> and like our most recent new kink was wax play mm -hmm. do you have a recent new kink you've tried Hmm. what was that what are you doing and how's it working and let us know because hmm. we're nosy might might be something that we you know don't know about and might want to yeah you and know we'll send our master researcher off to go learn about it <laughs> <laughs> is researching one of your kinks could be could be i think it is yeah. i think it is <laughs> That's it for us this time. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If mm -hmm. you really like it and would like some more of it, please consider subscribing. And to get notifications when we upload new content, hit that notification bell. Sure, do what Daddy says. <laughs> and if you really enjoy what we do, want to help us do more of it, get extra perks, get more, 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 join us on Patreon at mm -hmm. patreon.com slash killalords. Bye. Bye.